Hey guys, I'm Rich from NeoWin. Today we're talking about Windows 10 Insider Preview Build 15002. Now there is a lot that's new in this build. Obviously, I haven't made one of these videos in a while. Um, I promised I would when there was a lot to talk about, and there really is this time. So we're going to move pretty quickly through here. There's going to be some things that I can't really show just because they don't translate to a screen recording, but um, I'll, I'll do my best. So... First, we have a lot of uh, Microsoft Edge improvements here, right? So you can see that the, there's these new icons up at the top. And if we go down, we have tab previews. All right, we get rid of that. We can also, uh, you could set tabs aside. So if we click this button right here, it gets rid of our tabs. Where'd your tabs go? After you set them aside, you can restore them with this button. Now, I mean, I mean, it seems like something that you would, you would, use the same button for, but that's all right. Um, there's also a new jump list for Edge. So we can now open a new window or open a new in private window right from right from the, the jump list. Now, the previous one in the anniversary update, it just said Microsoft Edge or unpin from taskbar. So that's a um, nice improvement. Uh, component UI, this release introduces a new UWP architecture for Microsoft Edge's multi-process mod model, in including a new visual tree and new input model. All right, so uh, you can find that in the release notes. Flash, click to run. Um, I don't really know of any sites that use Flash, otherwise, otherwise I'd demonstrate it, but uh, I can show you the screenshot. The um, Basically, you try to load a website that uses Flash, It'll say, do you want to allow once, always allow from this site, or just block it? But it's going to block it by default, which um, a lot of browsers are doing now. Uh, next up is web payments. Microsoft Edge now has preview support for the new payment request API, which allows sites to make checkout easier using the payment and shipping preferences stored in your Microsoft wallet. Now, there's a problem with this because Microsoft wallet isn't available for the desktop right now. Um, you would have to add that stuff through, I guess, your phone, your Windows phone. But it also doesn't work on, you can't add credit cards to all phones. It's, it's the only ones you can use tap to pay at least with is the 550, 650, 950, and 950XL. And then also, there are very few banks that, um, that wallet actually works with. Uh, right now, it's Bank of America, BECU, First Tech Federal Credit Union, People's United Bank, PNC Bank, TD Bank, U.S. Bank, Bank of the West, Virginia Credit Union, and Security Service Federal Credit Union. It's a little more than the last time I checked, but I still don't even have a card that I can use with these banks. Uh, Chase is coming soon, and so is Fifth Third Bank. Chase has been coming soon since this thing launched. All right, so you, you would need a supported card for that, and the li like I said, the list is very small right now. So next up, you can put folders in the Start menu. Now, this is cool only because um, this is something we've had on mobile since um, Lumia Black. I want to say Windows Phone 8 Update 3. No, no, sorry, Windows Phone 8.1 Update 1. Lumia Denim was the, the one that added this to Windows Phone. All right, so now you got your folders here. Uh, looks like you can't name them right now, but I'm, that's got to be something that's coming. Doesn't seems like an odd thing to leave out unless you're uh, just naming the groups, and that's why. Next up is an updated Windows Share experience. Now we we've had this, or we've seen it so many times by now. Um, so we'll just click on something here, and <clears throat> we find the share icon here. So now this is what Share looks like, and you could get new apps from the store. Um, I've heard that there may be ads that show up here. I haven't seen one yet, but that's a new Share UI. And obviously the stuff that's coming up in black would be white if uh, if you use the light theme. All right, you can now capture a region of the screen. This is an interesting one. So uh, you hit Win-Shift-S, right, and you can now capture part of the screen, as you can see. Okay, and then that copies it to the clipboard. And that's something that was from OneNote, but it is um, it, it replaces the feature in OneNote. So now it's part of Windows 10. All right, so just keep that in mind. Improved high DPI support for desktop apps. So what you can do is you can go into, there's a lot of um, high DPI support that was added here. All right, so we're going to go in here, program files. You got You have to find 
the apps exe file which is right here for chrome you go to properties compatibility and then you say override high dpi scaling behavior and then you go to system enhanced all right and then you say okay now this isn't a very high resolution screen so it shouldn't really even make a difference wow but it does it's very different uh so yeah i guess uh that's how you can force it to to think it's a high high dpi screen so I guess that, that'll be helpful if you have multiple monitors because I use a 4K monitor and a 1080p monitor and it's a pain. Like I need to get my hands on a second 4K monitor. Uh, smoother window resize. So let's go back in here. Uh, we're talking about mostly uh, x86 apps. Oh, and uh, UWP apps also. So apparently this should be smoother. It still seems a little, uh, a little shaky there, but whatever. Uh, desktop icon placement and scaling improvements. Uh, simplified and faster VPN access. Again, these are things that don't really translate well to uh, to this. You got an improved sign-in dialog for apps. We have improved this, the app sign-in experience for users with multiple accounts. New, the new sign-in dialog shows your available Microsoft work or school accounts and gives you the ability to add new accounts to Windows. Um, you can add a lunar calendar to the to the Windows to the taskbar here. Um, so what you would do is you would go to settings. And we're going to go to date and time, or time and language, and then date and time. And then you can show additional calendars. So here are your options, simplified Chinese or traditional Chinese lunar calendars. Now, it seems like something that they might at some point add even more calendars to it. Because it just says show additional calendars. The, the option in settings isn't just to add lunar calendars. So it would be cool. Now you can have two, two calendars at once, which... Um, I guess could be helpful to some people, especially if uh, if if they use a lot of calendars. All right, improving our notification experience for app developers and everyone. App developers are increasingly facing scenarios within their applications where they require more flexibility to organize notifications to provide the desired user experience. To provide a more relevant and crafted experience to Windows users, we will now provide app developers with a way to create custom subgroups for their notifications in the action center. See, a lot of these things require developer integration. So I don't have any apps right now that, that, can, that can use this already right after installing the builds. Okay, so we have Windows Inc. improvements. So if you see, let's go to the sketch pad here. Now up here, you see that the highlighter is yellow. The ballpoint pen is red. This one uh, is either, it's black, it looks like. So if I change it, it changes the color of the pencil. And it does that for each one. Now, before, it would just sort of have a black icon and then like a little yellow dot right next to the highlighter there to show that it's yellow. So this is supposed to make it more clear what color you're actually using. Okay. Um, we've added point erase to the to the window ink workspaces sketchpad and screen. Okay, so um, there's like the stroke eraser here. This will allow you to erase a stroke like that. All right. Um, we've also updated our taskbar logic so that if you have the Windows Ink workspace icon on your taskbar, it displays the taskbar on every monitor. Um, this would help. Like, I don't, obviously, I'm not demoing this on a machine with two monitors. But it's great. On the anniversary update, they finally added a clock to the second monitor. It'll be nice to um, to have the Windows Inc. workspace uh, icon there, too. Okay, so Cortana has new features, which uh, is pretty... seems to happen a lot. So now, um, you know, a lot of apps have third-party uh, commands for Cortana. So what this, what this has now, um, if you type in an app name that supports Cortana, like we'll type in Audible... See, now it's going to give you suggested, suggested commands. So you can say, Audible, play The Force Awakens, Audible, show recommendations, Audible, go to my library, and so on. So um, there's a link that, to the store, uh, Better With Cortana apps. So that will let you do more Cortana stuff. All right, so more recurrence options for reminders. Set a reminder to make a phone call every year. Oh yeah, so you get so now you can set it um, every month, every you you can you can always do every day and stuff like that. Uh, so they add it every month and every year. So personally, I've also had trouble doing that. I've because I've tried to set reminders for every day, 
And then it just, it takes every day off it. So it, it knows I said it, but then it doesn't set it for every day. And, and it's a little frustrating. So I'm, I'm actually glad that that worked. Uh, keyboard shortcut change for invoking Cortana. The keyboard sh shortcut is changing to WinC. This shortcut will be off by default. If you'd like to use it now, head to Cortana settings and you'll find a new option to enable it. Win Shift C will be used to open the app charms menu seen in the title bar of Windows 8 apps. Okay, so if we go over to settings here and we can see that we can turn on the shortcut right there. I'm not sure why it's off by default. That doesn't really make any sense to me. Um, we've got a number of accessibility improvements, which I'm not going to demonstrate here, but a more inclusive experience out of the box. Um, the Windows out of box experience team has been working to reimagine how people set up their PCs for the first time. Our goal is to make this simpler and more accessible so every person powering on the new PC can independently set it up. Um, so it can respond to Cortana verbally. There's narrator support for WinPE and WinRE. Braille support is now available in Windows. They mentioned that it was coming to Windows a while ago. Um, narrator users, please take note that the narrator keyboard sh shortcut is changing. All right, uh, so that's control win enter now. Uh, narrator improvements, improve legibility for UWP apps in high contrast. So we can just take a look at high contrast here because that's easy to get to. And we have high, high contrast themes, of course. So let's apply it. Okay, so yeah, that's um, high contrast. I'm not even sure what I should be looking for here. So we're just gonna turn that off. Uh, my desktop just kind of <laughs> stopped working for a second to turn on high contrast because it, it, it's starting to bother me how these settings, like if I change the desktop on one machine, it syncs to all machines. All right, so we have uh, settings improvements. Now that's why, that's why I've kept settings open this whole time, if you haven't noticed. Helping you find the setting you need in settings. Uh, previous updates, so a lot of updates, they made a lot of updates to make search easier. Um, adding icons with each category, which, by the way, remember when everything used to be kind of uh, text-based? That was terrible. Uh, previous updates towards this have included improved settings search and adding icons uniquely. Uh, based on feedback, we've made a few more design tweaks with this build. Setting pages now contain additional information on the right or bottom, depending on the window size, providing links to support, feedback, and other related settings if, if available. Um, so yeah, this uh, seems kind of weird. If we go in here, you can see we have need a hand, chat with an agent, contact support. And by the way, that is the same on each page. Every page is going to show you that. Okay, so uh, since our system settings list was getting quite long, we've moved app-related settings out of system into a new category called apps. So we have all this stuff here, which is really... It, show, it makes for a nice main settings page. Rich Hay pointed it out from uh, WinSuperSite. And it's, it's really nice to have an even number of settings again. All right. And um, all right. You will notice that the header on the landing page of each settings category will now stay in place as you pan the page. All right. So I can't pan this page. There we go. There's that header staying in place. All right, next up, updated device settings. So that's right here. We were just there. Uh, what we can see is now uh, Bluetooth has been combined with other devices. So my mouse that's plugged in is here. The nano transceiver that's connected to that mouse is right here. All right, uh, download over metered connections. That's uh, pretty standard stuff. New display settings options. All right, so we're going to head over to display settings here because now we can change the resolution. Before we could change scaling, but now we can actually change the resolution of the display. Um, this is a Surface Pro that I'm using right now, so it's 1080p, and I'm going to leave it at that. Okay, uh, lower blue light. You can find that over in settings display. That's right up here. We go to blue light settings. We can change the color temperature at night. We can turn it on now. So you can kind of see that how that's changing. You know, you should be able to see it. I Again, I hope that translates to the screen recording. So we can say lower blue light automatically, and it says lower nightly at sunset. Great, so it basically works the same way that uh, iOS does, and we'll keep it pretty bright for now. Uh, next up, new per app surface dial settings. I don't have surface dial settings in here. You would find that in um, the, the same as the Bluetooth menu here, and you would have one that says wheel right above autoplay and right under pen and Windows ink. 
All right. Uh, Windows personal personalization now supports recent colors. Okay, so here you go. We'll see that there's the um, five most recently used colors. I don't believe that I've ever used any of these colors. I, I think I've changed this once because I installed a theme from a, from the store, and my previous color isn't even on here. I wish they would add more colors to this, though, because I don't understand why why you wouldn't allow for the full color spectrum here. But that's just, that's neither here nor there. Windows themes management. So if you download a theme from the store, you can manage them here. All right, that's all pretty straightforward. Improved cross device settings. This is, um, this is pretty simple stuff. It's not really improved so much as they moved it to system. All right, and we're gonna move on. Uh, metered ethernet connection support. So you can now set your connection as a, as a, a metered connection. So if we go to Ethernet, I don't, you know, I don't have Ethernet on here either. So fair enough. Improving your precision touchpad experience, adjusting the volume control. So if we go to, to touchpad, there's a new there's a new group of settings here for three finger gestures, and said to switch uh, desktops or show switch apps, um, change audio and volume. All right, so we can do that. All right, so that's enough. BSOD is now GSOD. So, so um, if uh, your system crashes, instead of a blue screen of death, you now get a green screen of death. Now, this is only for insiders. So when when you um get the creators update, it's still going to be blue. So I'm guessing, and I, I'm looking forward to seeing this, when the RTM build comes out in March or so, I'm wondering if that will have a blue screen of death, even for even for insiders, but we'll find out then. Um, quick virtual machine creation in Hyper-V. By the way, I, I feel a lot like the amount of effort it took to make the, the blue screen of death green could have been spent causing less blue screens of death, but that's just me. Uh, quick virtual machine creation in Hyper-V. Uh, Hyper-V Manager has a new page that makes it faster and easier to create virtual machines. Just open Hyper-V Manager and click Quick Create. Okay, so if we go to Hyper-V here, should be right here, Hyper-V Manager. Um, obviously, this only works on Windows 10 Pro because I don't believe Hyper-V works in Windows 10 Home unless something changed. Okay, so we can go to Quick Create. All right, there's our Quick Create option, and that'll, uh, that'll allow us to create a new virtual machine. I'm not going to. That seems like a um, little bit of overkill for what we're doing here. Um, improving your update experience, right? So we're back to to settings here. A uh, lot, of, lot of stuff changed in settings, which is awesome. I love it when stuff changes in settings. Um, up, there's a new icon here that shows that no updates are available. Some settings are managed by your organization, which is not true because this is completely my PC. No one, I, no one else has even used this PC since I got it. All right, so... Um, under advanced options here, we can now pause updates. All right. Um, oh, and the option to defer updates was uh, is gone. You know that was something that uh, in the leaked builds fourteen nine nine seven, both of them were there, and I was a little confused about it. like so. What's the difference between pausing updates and deferring updates? So it looks like yeah, you can hold back updates for thirty five days. All right. Um, We've added an option that will allow you to decide whether or not to include driver updates as well. Okay, um, so yeah, there's your new options for updates. Oh, there's a few more here. We've made some improvements for our logic to better detect if the PC's display is actively being used for something such as projecting and avoid attempting a restart. This is a huge deal because how many times have you heard of, of times where someone was doing something and Windows tried to install an update? and it restarted. So this is very helpful for anyone who's had that happen. Uh, Windows Insider with the home edition of Windows will now also be able to leverage the increased 18 hour max window for active hours. Great, so um, home users can do something at least. By the way, the pausing of updates for 35 days, um, the driver updates thing, that's only for Windows 10 Pro, Education, and Enterprise, that's it. Um, I made a joke the other day that if you don't want updates, buy an XP, HP Spectre X360 because 
While you can't delay updates for that long, some machines still haven't even gotten the anniversary update. All right, <laughs> placing work files on removable drives. Some enterprise customers have found that saving work files to a removable drive would prevent them from accessing the files on a different device due to encryption. Um, we now ask if, if you want to keep your files at work, prevent them to personal or cancel the copy op operation. Uh, when saving with en encrypted devices to a removable drive, we now ask if you want to keep your files at work. Oh, so uh, convert them to personal or save to a different location. All right, fair enough. Uh, open dialogue for work files and personal apps. We protect companies using Windows information protection by displaying a warning message when opening work files in unallowed applications. That's stuff they announced a while ago at Ignite. Uh, power usage experiments. This is not something I have. For, so for some users, uh, they're playing with certain power, man, power management things. And if you go into the task manager under details, under status, it'll say throttled. So we can show this. Okay, so we go to details here. And where it says running or suspended there, it would say throttled. But none of mine say that, so obviously I'm not one of those select users. Okay, other than that, we have a lot of input improvements for uh, pinyin, Chinese, uh, Japanese type um, keyboards and input methods. And I... I'm not the guy to demo that for you, so we're just going to skip past that. Um, just a few other things. Windows Insider Program website updates. Um, also, you will now... I can't even open the... Uh, start. There it goes. All right, so you see you don't see the 3D Builder app up here, which is great if you ask me because I never used it and I don't want it. Um, so that's now in Windows Accessories. Uh, why they haven't moved View 3D Preview or Paint 3D Preview into Windows Accessories. Because remember, Paint was always under Windows Accessories. So why, why they haven't moved that is beyond me. But maybe they will because I'd love to see them organize more of this stuff like they used to do. Um, rather than just throwing out all this stuff, get Office if you already have Office installed, stuff like that. But... Um, that's about it. Um, there's a bunch of fixes. You can check all that stuff out at NeoWin. Known issues. Um, and that's it, because this has been a long video already, so I'm going to cut it short here. Anyway, guys, I'm Rich from NeoWin, and have a great night.